Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 86 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I would like to get into a new mod. Well, new to the series, at least. Uh, I'd like to play with Blood Magic. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Um, Blood Magic 3, it technically is called, uh, and it's a little different... Uh, significantly different from Blood Magic 2's progression system. So there's there's definitely some similarities to what we saw in previous versions of Blood Magic, but there's also some significant differences as well. Uh, so let's start with why I want to get into Blood Magic. Number one, it's a fun mod and I like playing with it. So bleh, that's what you get for a reason. But also, I like to have reasons for doing things. And right now, my main reason is, guess what I'm completely out of? Wood. I have... Almost no oak wood. All right, we got a little bit because some just showed up from my tree farm there. But I, so between episodes, right, we wrapped up last episode, we were kind of playing with our reactors and I said I would be done with it for a little while. Completely ran out of fissile fuel. And I'm like, I totally thought I had a ton of this stuff. What happened? How did I run out? You know what I ran out of? Sulfur. Ran out of sulfur dust. So all the things are behaving the way I want them to, except I ran out of wood to turn into charcoal to turn into sulfur. And as a result, I got no more fissile fuel. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer. Kind of a bummer. Now, what I could totally do is flip this lever here and turn the nuclear waste that we're getting into plutonium that we can then use to create more fissile fuel. And we might do that in a future episode. But I really want to take a break from mechanism reactors for a bit because we've been doing that for what seems like a long time. And, you know, I like to keep things, you know, variety and all that, spice of life stuff. So I said... Let's look at a new mod that we haven't played with yet this series, and let's also find a way to improve uh, our tree farm, right? Because it's doing a good job now, uh, but it's definitely not keeping up with our wood needs with regards to sulfur, right? Because each oak log is going to require a piece of sulfur, and we need a lot of it. So, uh, you know what would be fun, I thought to myself? Let's use blood magic rituals to speed up crop growth, and I assume that'll work on trees. I don't even know. But either way, we will have fun playing with Blood Magic and hopefully get something that we need out of it. Now, worst case, if we really needed to, I could totally, you know, go Astral and, and probably speed up the growth of those trees. But we've done a lot with Astral already. You guys have seen a, a, several Astral Rituals at this point. So I figured let's do Blood Magic. A little something new. A little something different. Plus a fun mod that we get to play with. Plus... There's other cool toys and gadgets in Blood Magic I'd like to play with. So that's where we're at. So let's look at getting started with blood magic. So first off, you're going to want to craft yourself the Sanguine Scientium, an alchemical wizardry book, which is very simply a book and a piece of glass. So not too shabby there. You get your nice little welcome to blood magic. A lot of stuff isn't yet implemented, so please excuse our dust. So quite a few things are not implemented yet, like will automation, several of the sigils, uh, several of the rituals, um, you know, a few things, right? A couple things. Quite a few rituals, it looks like, are not implemented just yet. Uh, some of the sigils are not implemented just yet. Uh, but I guess all this is being worked on and will potentially, you know, happen at some point in the future. Um, but we can click here to get started. Uh, and then there's several tiers of things that we can start playing with right away. So rituals, we definitely, you know, have a few things. Does it tell me all the different... Ah, list of rituals. Cool. So, let's see. Reap of the Harvest Moon... Ritual of Regeneration, Crusher, Feathered Knight, Green Grove. This is the one um, crops grows crops within its area. So I don't know how good that's going to be. I guess we'll find out. But there's obviously some other cool ones that might be fun to have. Um, you know, quite a few neat looking rituals here that we could play with. I don't know. Should be fun. So we'll check that out for sure, right? Um, so I like... I like the addition of the in-game book, um, you know, obviously this is um, that mod that everybody uses for books now, which is a Vasky mod, which is just the awesomest of book mods. Just everybody using this standard format book is has been really awesome for modding. So big shout out to Vasky for, you know, implementing and releasing that mod, whose name completely is slipping my mind right now. Patchouli. That's it. Patchouli. Had to go look at the name. I just forget the name. Super good mod, though. So let's click here to get started. Uh, so Blood Magic 3's progression is still being reworked, and the first few steps are significantly different from Blood Magic 2's. We do plan on adding better guidance, such as entry unlocking, but we are waiting until the progression is locked down. In the meantime, here's a quick overview of how to progress in this alpha version of Blood Magic 3. The first step in Blood Magic is to build a Blood Altar and Sacrificial Nice. The, use these to generate LP for self-sacrificing. So let's get a Blood Altar. Should be pretty cool. Uh, so we'll start that bad boy up, and then 
Done and done. And then we're gonna need a sacrificial knife. So that shouldn't be a big deal either. Done deal, sir. That was easy. That was easy. Um, cool. Use this LP to craft, uh, and then use these to donate LP for self-sacrificing. So where do we want to set this up? And also, by the way, I might do some shenanigans. I'm just warning, I might do some shenanigans. I have an idea that I want to try, and it might be ridiculous. I'm just saying. So what if we cleared out the top of this mountain a little bit, flattened it up a little bit, right? Along with a little bit of a horn, so we can make this really super cool. Right? I'm just saying this might work out. Hello. Hello, friends. I would like to I would like a pass on interacting with you guys. And I hope Man and Artifice, you know, gave me a way to make this less happeny. They're fun, but then at some point you're like, I don't want to deal with you all. Boy, they are hard to kill. So I thought what might be fun is to build like a little area for doing my blood magic-y things in. Um, I, I, I do love the idea of like a little kind of hidden hideaway-ish that is almost hard to detect the existence of. So I thought that would be fun to do. So why don't I do that? Does that sound fun? I feel like that sounds fun. So what if I did you? And we did something like this. Mm, yeah, why not? That should be fine. Cool. And then I want to make sure that you don't kind of see it from the outside. So just for fun, right? I think that could be cool. Uh, let's get more dirt here. If I don't have any in there, I'll have some in my pocket storage. I think. Yeah, I do. Cool. All right. Just, you know, like I said, kind of hide the existence of this location a little bit, right? I mean, we're doing blood magic. we got to be sneaky about it. Totally natural cliff face there. Can't even tell. Can't even tell that there might be blood magic happening behind the scenes there. You know, once all the dirt, you know, settles and turns to grass and turns from grass back into dirt kind of thing, should be pretty cool. Should look pretty natural-ish. We'll see. If I have to smooth out some of the edges here, I can. Yeah, not too shabby. Neat. Now, can I hit the ceiling here as well? I think I can. So the only thing I might want to do is convert you guys to dirt. And let's see if any of that dirt's visible from in here. I'm thinking eh, a few. Nice. How about over here? Nope. Well, well and truly hidden. What episode did this creeper explode on that I'm now just filling in the hole from? I'm just curious. Oh good, it's raining. I love when that happens. Alright, so that looks pretty neat. Now how about we hide this a little bit? So I want to, you know... Something like that. Now, how do we hide the entrance? That would be the question. Uh, there's obviously a few ways we could go about doing that. Let me think about it. What I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is, might be cool. What if we used a force field from RF tools and we mimicked dirt blocks? Would that be neat? I like, I like the idea of that. So if we used a shield, Right. Uh, 
and a couple shield blocks. And a flux point for the power. What we could have literally sitting right here with a flux point underneath. Okay. And we could have a pass for players, add, and solid for all. So default is solid all. Um, so players pass through, it's solid for everyone else. The shield rain, I don't know what that means. Mimic, use the texture from the supported block. Transparent, solid, invisible, shield, texture, mimic block. Can we mimic dirt? I assume that's what we want. And then we had the wrench from RF tools. Oop. Ah ha! Ah ha! Ah ha! Look at that. How, how cool is that, huh? How's that for a secret entrance? That is cool, and you can walk right in. Ooh, I like. Ooh, I like. Eh? Eh? That's neat. That's cool. I don't know why I get so excited about you know, like a secret entrance kind of thing like that, but I just, like, I think that's so cool. What do you want? What do you want from me? Yeah, and this can be our blood magic room. That's what's up. That is what's up for sure. If I wanted that to be a three by three entrance, I could totally do that too, if, 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 if one by two is too tight. I don't think it is, I think it's doable, right? We'll see. If I if I have some problems getting into that, I'll, you know, obviously I could I could expand it a little bit. But I think that's neat. Even furthermore, even furthermore, if I really wanted to, I could totally have a grass block be mimicked here as a shield as well. And that would be even less obvious. But I kind of like, just for my purposes, knowing which spot uh I need to walk into. Because I mean if I if I if I mimicked a grass block here, I would totally get lost. I'd be like, where is it again? <laughs> I would constantly be running to the wall, and then you guys would be like, oh, dire, please. So anyway, that's our secret little hiding spot for Blood Magic area. Huh? Eh? Not terrible. Not terrible. I think it looks good. Okay. So with that said, let's put you away. Let's put you away, and let's get into some Blood Magic. Dun, dun, dun. Now, um, as we recall, we're totally going to need you know, an altar, like, rising up above the floor kind of deal. I'm thinking I'll sink it into the floor. So, like, we'll, we'll, and I'm not entirely sure how I want this to be. Like, do I want this centered in this room? I didn't even, like, measure out this room. I kind of just winged it. Um, but, you know, eventually we're going to have, like, around that. And then under the neath, we're going to have, like, the tier three structure, right? For those of you who've seen Blood Magic before, which I'm assuming most of you have, but if you haven't, um, basically the, the, the blood altar is a multi-block structure. Uh, the tier one is just that, but then when you get to tier two, it needs some things under it. And then tier three gets a little bit bigger, and tier four gets bigger, and tier five gets bigger. Yada, yada, yada. Um, and I forget if tier five begins need to see the sky, but tier five isn't even implemented yet, so I'm not going to worry about that. If it becomes a problem, we'll figure it out. So here we go. Uh, to get started, we have to just do a little bit of this. You click the sacrificial knife. Um, and it'll fill the blood altar with a little bit of life points. So it's basically draining your life to create magical energy. Now, we already know that my regeneration is not great. So I've got an idea. I've got an idea. So what I'd like to make is the rat upgrade voodoo doll. Rat takes damage instead of its owner only when within a certain distance. Damage is evenly distributed among multiple rats with this upgrade. The downside of it is, wow, it's expensive. So we need some Plague Essence, we need a Rat Skull, we need a Top Hat. So let's see, what what all do we need? Uh, so we need the Top Hat, which looks doable. Right? Which is cool. So now we just need some Totems of Undying. <laughs> That ain't gonna be easy, is it? Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. 
red. So that comes from the dudes, right? Um, now, isn't there... Did I marker it? I would hope I did. Red tree, wither spawner, guardians, astral temple. Didn't I find at some point tower? Is that... Yeah, let's go to that. Tower. You ready? I'm going to sleep through the night because nighttime bad. But I think that's an Illager Tower. And are those dudes going to drop the Totems on, of Undying for me? I want to say yes. So, no, you will not get Totem of Undying from this place. But it will have one of those dudes from the raids that when I kill them gives me the thing that will start a raid in a village. So how about I do this? I fly out to the woodland, or, or to the, not to the woodland mansion, to the to the tower thingy out here, kill one of those dudes, get the bad omen debuff, pop into a village, trigger a raid, kill the raiders, get Totem of Undying from Evokers. They always drop one Totem of Undying on death, and it is not affected by looting. So basically, if I can get two Evokers from a raid, there's your Totem of Undying times two, and that would be cool. I don't know how many Evokers generally spawn in raids, but worst case, I just do two raids. I think we can handle that, yeah? Hey, look, here's the thing that I wanted. So we're looking for the dude. Hello. Now, this thing just literally spawns an unlimited number of these guys, right? Yeah. So eventually one should should spawn with the with the, with the flag thingy. That'll give me bad omen. Is that how it works? Is that what's up? Some dudes outside. See, vanilla Minecraft and Dyer doesn't know. Ooh, potion of ex yeah, I'll take that. Is that all you got? Is that all you got, Tower? Meow. Hey, there's one. That omen time. Hooray! See you guys, I'll be back. Cool. And then we pop into <clears throat> said village. Hopefully we an evoker spawns during the raid, and we'll see what happens. Right? So there's a village right over here. So let's do uh, the thing. Let's get out our from our bag. We're going to want our fancy bow from Ratlantis. We're going to want our fancy arrows that are just basically plain arrows and nothing fancy about them at all. <coughs> and we're ready to go. Bam. Oh, no. I entered a raid. Ah, bad omen debuff. Removed. Villager raid incoming. Dun, 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 dun. With my extremely overpowered armor and gear and creative mode flight and really powerful bow and one-shot everything sword and hammer, I think I'm gonna be pretty okay. I'm gonna be pretty okay. Look, here they come. Are you supposed to one-shot everything, you bow? Dun, dun, dun. Raid phase two. Villagers into your homes. Or rally to the bell. I forget what that button does. Something. Yeah. Dang it. I'll protect you villagers from this raid that I caused to happen. I can basically just spam the bow, I feel like. I mean, yeah. I feel like I can do that. The thing gets to, like, max charge almost instantly. So I think I can just... And that's okay, right? Seems fine. Phase three! You brought one of those dudes with you. No witch, bad. No regenerating those pillager beast things. All right, phase four. Let's go. Bring it, illagers and pillagers. I don't know the difference. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's cool. Hey, there's one more? Where is he? Oh, hello. Sorry, didn't see you there, sir. Yeah, guys. Ring the bell. Very helpful. Now, this is the guy that I want, right? No, this is the guy that I want. I think he dropped one. Yep, he totally did. Now, will there be another one of those in the next raid, or how's that work? Or in the, or in the next wave? All right, will there be another one of those? Another evoker? Because that would give me my second totem of undying, and that would be good. Worst case, I have to start another raid, which I would do off camera if I need to. I think this is the final wave, right? This is the last one. Yeah, there he is. Give me another totem of undying, please. I need it. Yeah, he did. Nice. And, you know, I will give I, I will give the village and pillage update this. Not having to find a woodland mansion to get those totems on dying is very nice. Hello, Ice Hollager. Goodbye, Ice Hollager. Oh no, there's another wave. Look at that. Okay, cool. Ice wand, pillage statue. Sweet. Okay. Hey, cool. Another evoke. Nice. No, oh, they're actually hurting me. Nobody, nobody panic. Don't look now, but they're actually hurting me. <laughs> Raid complete? Hooray! Hero of the village. It's me! I saved you all. You're welcome, villagers. I saved you from that crisis I created. Hooray! Yay! Villagers are very happy with me. They'll never know that I created that crisis. <laughs> All right, so now what I should be able to do is put all this junk away that I just got, including Ice Ice Baby Ice Wand. Kind of curious. Little curious. What's it do? I don't know what you do. Let's test it on this dude. Hello. Huh? I mean... Yep. Oh, hello. Ow, oh, hey. Something happened? Maybe I have to charge it to use it? That could be. Yeah, maybe I have to, like, charge it up or shift-click it or... Oh, hello. It's a thing. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it does, but it's a thing. Anyway, let's try out this rat upgrade here now so if i want my voodoo doll rat upgrade and we also from rats grabbed our uber ridiculous nonsense rat that would be him right now hopefully there's no mobs for you to be fighting stay here right i'm gonna remove ender upgrade and i'm gonna install voodoo great upgrade right and then ender upgrade goes away now your job is to stay here right so if i just popped you in the corner Nobody puts non-believer psychic voodoo doll rat upgrade in the corner, except me. Uh, in theory, it means that all damage received will be redirected to the rat. 
Sneaky blood magic is sneaky. I think, I think, I think it's doing damage in a way that it's not being redirected. I think it's doing damage in a way that's not being redirected. Where did he go? There he is. Cause that should have worked. Rat takes damage instead of its owner. Only when within a certain distance, duh, duh, duh. extremely fast health regeneration, stay here. Either the rat upgrade Voodoo Doll is not working at all, right? I'm just gonna remove these two for a sec. Or the way the sacrificial knife works is, um, is that it like direct, applies damage in a way that can't be redirected, right? Like, however, this damage, I was really hoping that would work. That would have been awesome. I mean, it was still a fun endeavor, right? But I, and I hadn't tested that in advance, obviously. I was hoping that would work, but no such luck. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna need a better trick for that. Now, my plan is to eventually do mob sacrifice things, but meh. Let's, let's progress through blood magic and we'll figure out a way to, to, to cheese that a little bit more in the future. Uh, so the first step is that we need to craft a weak blood orb, a blank slate, and some soul snares, right? So weak blood orb, blank slate, and some soul snares, right? And that's just going to be string in the blood altar. And you're a diamond still? Yes. And you're stone still? Yeah, or granite or diorite or infested stone or stone. Yeah, we get the idea. Cool. And a diamond, of which we have 1.2 thousand. So that's exciting. So you go in there and... See, he's taking damage. So that's what leads me to believe that it's totally working-ish, right? It's totally working-ish, but not perfect. Because I would expect the rat wouldn't take damage if it wasn't working at all, like from the rat's perspective. Yeah, see, look, it's he's definitely taking damage, but in whatever way blood magic is behaving to do the application of that harm to the player, it's, it's definitely doing it in a way that rats isn't redirecting, if that makes sense. Uh, so hey, we've got a weak blood orb now, which I can now bind to my player, like that. And it is now bound to Direwolf 20, so that's me. And I now can do things. So let's also get some snares, right? Because that was a thing we needed to get. Uh, so I'm gonna craft a few of these. It's real simple. You just, you know, click whatever into the blood altar and it'll craft it and then come out. Easy peasy, right? Uh, and, and right click with an empty hand to remove item from altar. Very straightforward. Now we don't know how much LP is stored in this altar yet, um, but we will at some point. All oh, right, we can't shift click string. I know how vanilla works, I promise. And I don't know how many snares we're gonna need here. I'm gonna get a few, because previous instances of this mod, you needed a few. Man, I was really banging on that rat thing working. I really was. I super was. It's all good. I'm gonna have to just figure out like a regen option or something else to 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 do that with. We'll figure it out. One more. I'll get an even ten. And then we'll make a few blank runes. Cool. And blank runes need a little bit more LP than the than the snares. Uh, but they should be pretty straightforward. So they, because they need more LP, they take longer. No idea how much LP is stored in this thing at the moment. I need to make a sigil that I can use to detect that. See, we don't have enough. So we ran out of LP, which is bad news, but now we're good. All right, cool. So a couple blank runes and we're good. Nice. And then our next step, an alchemy table is used... Um, to craft different objects such as arcane ashes, reagents for sigils, anointments, and 2x ore processing. And so we definitely want an alchemy table. Alchemy table, please. And that will just kind of pop into the room here. And that gets placed like a bed, basically. So I guess the next thing we need then is arcane ashes. And that would be you. 
So you are made in an alchemy table with redstone, bone meal, gunpowder, and coal. Redstone, bone meal, gunpowder, and coal. I'm down with that. Whoop and whoop. So this, by the way, when you click this guy, stores LP in your personal soul network. So each player has a soul network of energy. So you can either store the energy in a blood altar or in the player's personal soul network. So let's see, is that, I don't know exactly what we need to do. Um, Does that, have to, yeah, coal works, right? Gunpowder works. Or does that have to be white dye? Oh, it might need to be white dye. Sorry, I keep forgetting that bone meal is not white dye anymore. Minecraft confuses me. I don't know what these buttons do. I assume it has something to do with automation, like input output type stuff. I'll click them in a minute. Hey, arcane ashes, neat. Okay. Yep, no idea what that does. <laughs> I have no idea what that does. Um, alchemy table. A lot of its content is not yet implemented. Mouse over the LP for more info. Okay. Uh, can be inserted to or extracted from. This is how it's configured. The alchemy table has a number of buttons on its right hand side. These are in order down, up, north, south, west, and east. To use them, first click on a slot in the alchemy table. Here we have selected the central finished item slot for demonstration. Next click one of the six buttons. Okay, cool. That's neat. So basically you would like click on this. Ah, I see. Okay, cool. Cool. Got it. That makes sense. So that's how you can customize. That's neat at least. I like that. You can customize how the how the table is, you know, managed. All right, cool. So back to how to get started. So we made an alchemy ray, uh, da, 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 two items uh, such as a divination sigil or perform the sum kind of function turning day to night. Oh, really? I can do that? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I did not know that that's a thing you could do. Time-based arrays are straightforward arrays that control the time of day. The items will be consumed once the array starts changing the time. These recipes are temporary and will change in the future. The day array will change the time of day to the next sunrise. The night array will change the time of day to the next sunset. That's cool. You gotta try this. I just gotta try it, right? Coal and then coal? Like, do I just put two coal into there? Where's the sun at the moment? Looks like it's rising. So maybe we should do two lapis just to see what look like. Let's try both. We'll try both just to see what it looks like. Cause this is new and I like to try new things. So do we just literally put coal and then another piece of coal in? Yeah, look at that, okay, cool. So that, I think, will actually make it sunrise. Oh, look at that, that's neat. Whoosh, look at it go. Oh, that is awesome. I love I love that it actually, it's not just like, hey, it's instantly nighttime now. It, it actually does the whole move this thing across, that's cool. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool, look at that go. Did you see that? That's neat. Nothing like some fancy little animations. Nicely done. Nicely done, I like that. Anyway, where were we? Doing things. Yes, so one of the next things we're gonna want is a divination sigil. So there's several sigils that we can get. The divination one's the most, not that one, that's blood lamp. Very simple. Um, it just tells you how much LP is in your player's soul network or in a blood altar. So to get that, we're going to need redstone and then a blank slate in an alchemy array. So we can do this outside or we can do it inside. It doesn't super matter. But we want redstone and a blank slate in an alchemy array. Didn't I make two blank slates? Did I use one? Oh. That's cool. See? Divination sigil. Boom! Now it's bound to dongle 20. I can see I've got 1100 LP in my soul network. So every time I right click this, I will get another 200 LP at the cost of two hearts, right? And this guy, we can see how much current essence there is and what its capacity is. So currently he has 540 LP stored. If I 
self-sacrifice, it will do 740 LP. Cool. And yes, you can kill yourself by doing this, so be careful. Nice. All right, so I'm going to call that a good wrapping up for the for the episode. We've got the very basics of uh, blood magic going on. I kind of love the, the, the secret blood magic little hidey area here. I think that's a cool... I think that's a neat touch, right? I think that's super cool. Um, you, know, you guys tell me if it's neat or not. I think it's neat. You guys let me know in the comments, please. Uh, and then we'll come back next episode, play more with blood magic. We're going to have to figure out a way to kind of cheese the whole hurt yourself method. But we're also going to probably soon get into tier 2, which is when we'll be able to kill mobs for soul and, and, and life points. Um, and I think once we do that, I've got a couple ideas on how I'd like to automate that in a clever way. But we'll see. We'll see. For now, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.